Behavior Modification, Wikipedia Article Audio Behavior modification refers to behavior change procedures that were employed during the 1970s and early 1980s. Based on methodological behaviorism, overt behavior was modified through the use of presumed consequences, including positive and negative reinforcement contingencies to increase desirable behavior, or administering positive and negative punishment and slash or extinction to reduce behavior. For the treatment of phobias, habituation and punishment were the basic principles used in flooding, a subcategory of desensitization. Although there were certain historical instances in which behavior modification did change behavior after initially assessing the behavior-environment interactions, there was not any research identifying the most effective ways to change behavior until the mid-1980s. The term changed to applied behavior analysis because the latter involves always analyzing the behavior environment contingencies to identify the most successful ways to change behavior. Further, ABBA, the application of behavior analysis, is based on radical behaviorism which refers to B.F. Skinner's viewpoint that cognition and emotions are covered behavior that are to be subjected to the same conditions as overt behavior. Description Some areas of effectiveness The first use of the term behavior modification appears to have been by Edward Thorndike in 1911. His article Provisional Laws of Acquired Behavior or Learning makes frequent use of the term modifying behavior. Through early research in the 1940s and the 1950s the term was used by Joseph Walp's research group. The experimental tradition in clinical psychology used it to refer to psychotherapeutic techniques derived from empirical research. It has since come to refer mainly to techniques for increasing adaptive behavior through reinforcement and decreasing maladaptive behavior through extinction or punishment. In recent years, the concept of punishment has had many critics, though these criticisms tend not to apply to negative punishment and usually apply to the addition of some aversive event. The use of positive punishment by board-certified behavior analysts is restricted to extreme circumstances when all other forms of treatment have failed and when the behavior to be modified is a danger to the person or to others. In clinical settings positive punishment is usually restricted to using a spray bottle filled with water as an aversive event. When misused, more aversive punishment can lead to affective disorders as well as to the receiver of the punishment increasingly trying to avoid the punishment. Behavior modification relies on the following. Functional behavior assessment forms the core of applied behavior analysis. Many techniques in this therapy are specific techniques aimed at specific issues. Interventions based on behavior analytic principles have been extremely effective in developing evidence-based treatments. In addition to the above, a growing list of research-based interventions from the behavioral paradigm exist. With children with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, one study showed that over a several-year period, Children in the behavior modification group had half the number of felony arrests as children in the medication group. These findings have yet to be replicated, but are considered encouraging for the use of behavior modification for children with ADHD. There is strong and consistent evidence that behavioral treatments are effective for treating ADHD. A recent meta-analysis found that the use of behavior modification for ADHD resulted in effect sizes in between group studies, pre-post studies, within group studies, and single subject studies indicating behavioral treatments are highly effective. In Job Performance Behavior modification programs form the core of many residential treatment facility programs. 
they have shown success in reducing recidivism for adolescents with conduct problems and adult offenders. One particular program that is of interest is Teaching Family Homes, which is based on a social learning model that emerged from radical behaviorism. These particular homes use a family-style approach to residential treatment, which has been carefully replicated over 700 times. Recent efforts have seen a push for the inclusion of more behavior modification programs in residential reentry programs in the U.S. to aid prisoners in readjusting after release. One area that has repeatedly shown effectiveness has been the work of behaviorists working in the area of community reinforcement for addictions. Another area of research that has been strongly supported has been behavioral activation for depression. Criticism One way of giving positive reinforcement in behavior modification is in providing compliments, approval, encouragement, and affirmation. A ratio of five compliments for every one complaint is generally seen as being effective in altering behavior in a desired manner and even in producing stable marriages. Of notable interest is that the right behavioral intervention can have profound system effects. For example, Forgatch and DeGarmo found that with mothers who were recently divorced, a standard round of parent management training could help elevate the divorced mother out of poverty. In addition, parent management training programs, sometimes referred to as behavioral parent training programs, have shown relative cost effectiveness for their efforts for the treatment of conduct disorder. Thus, such intervention can have profound effects on socializing the child in a relatively cost-effective fashion and help get the parent out of poverty. This level of effect is often looked for and valued by those who practice behavioral engineering and results of this type have caused the Association for Behavior Analysis International to take a position that those receiving treatment have a right to effective treatment and a right to effective education. Based on the conceptual premises of classical behaviorism and reinforcement theory, the organizational behavior modification model represents a behavioral approach to the management of human resources in organizational settings. The application of reinforcement theory to modification of behavior as it relates to job performance first requires analysis of necessary antecedents of the desired behavior. After it has been determined that the necessary antecedents are present, managers must first identify the behaviors to change. These behaviors must be observable, measurable, task-related, and critical to the task at hand. Next, a baseline measure of the behavior must be assessed and functional consequences analyzed. Now that the link between the antecedent, behavior, and contingent consequences has been established, an intervention to change the behavior can be introduced. If the intervention is successful in modifying the behavior, it must be maintained using schedules of reinforcement and must be evaluated for performance improvement. The OB mod has been found to have a significant positive effect on task performance globally with performance on average increasing 17%. A study that examined the differential effects of incentive motivators administered with the OB. Mod on job performance found that using money as a reinforcer with OB. Mod was more successful at increasing performance compared to routine pay for performance. The authors also found that using money administered through the OB. MOD produced stronger effects, compared to social recognition and performance feedback. Behavior modification is critiqued in person-centered psychotherapeutic approaches such as Roach Ryan Counseling and Re-Evaluation Counseling, which involve connecting with the human qualities of the person to promote healing, while behaviorism is denigrating to the human spirit. BF 
Skinner argues in Beyond Freedom and Dignity that unrestricted reinforcement is what led to the feeling of freedom, thus removal of aversive events allows people to feel freer. Further criticism extends to the presumption that behavior increases only when it is reinforced. This premise is at odds with research conducted by Albert Bandura at Stanford University. His findings indicate that violent behavior is imitated, without being reinforced, in studies conducted with children watching films showing various individuals beating the daylights out of Bobo. Bandura believes that human personality and learning is the result of the interaction between environment, behavior, and psychological process. There is evidence, however, that imitation is a class of behavior that can be learned just like anything else. Children have been shown to imitate behavior that they have never displayed before and are never reinforced for, after being taught to imitate in general. Several people have criticized the level of training required to perform behavior modification procedures, especially those that are restrictive or use aversives, aversion therapy, or punishment protocols. Some desire to limit such restrictive procedures only to licensed psychologists or licensed counselors. Once licensed for this group, Post-licensed certification in behavior modification is sought to show scope of competence in the area through groups like the World Association for Behavior Analysis. Still others desire to create an independent practice of behavior analysis through licensure to offer consumers choices between proven techniques and unproven ones. Level of training and consumer protection remain of critical importance in applied behavior analysis and behavior modification. Reinforcement, punishment, extinction, shaping, fading, chaining.